The Fourier transform decomposes a function of time, a signal, into the frequencies that make it up, in a way similar to how a musical chord can be expressed as the frequencies or pitches of its constituent notes. This signal decomposition is used a lot uh, in engineering applications. In this series of videos we will focus on the technical, on the calculational part. How do you compute such a transform? For the original function, we will use the variable x, even though it is originally seen as time. And for the transform domain, we will use as our variable omega. So, what do we have? We have some real function u of x. Now, we have a condition of u of x, we need to be able to integrate. So, if we take the absolute value of u and we integrate from minus infinity to infinity, this has to be finite. If this is the case, then we can compute the Fourier transform of u of x. How do we do that? Well, write it as this, the Fourier transform of u of x, like this, or as u hat of omega. So u hat of omega will be our new function, and it's often denoted with this curly f, f of u of x. So what do we do? We take our u of x, we multiply with e to the power minus i omega x, and then we integrate with respect to x from minus infinity to infinity. So after this integration, x has gone, because we have integrated with respect to that, and only the omega is left. So what we have left is some function u hat of omega, and that's the Fourier transform of our function u of x. Now this is one definition. And there are many uh, definitions, and not one of, of them is better than the other one. So there are just a couple of conventions, unfortunately. Uh, first of all, you, can, uh, you don't need the minus sign, you can do the Fourier transform with a plus instead of a minus sign. So that's a possible convention. And you can put factors 2 pi over here, or you can put a 1 over 2 pi in front of the integral, or 1 over square root of 2 pi. So there are factors of 2 pi floating around. Many conventions. So, if you are using Fourier tra uh, transforms in some book, look at your book to see what convention they are using in that particular book. We, in this series of videos, will stick to this convention over here, with the minus sign in the transform and without factors of 2 pi. Now we have some properties. Uh, properties we can use to compute using uh, Fourier transform of some functions to compute Fourier transforms of other functions. Uh, for example, we have linearity. So the Fourier transform of a linear combination of u1 and u2 is the linear combination of your Fourier transforms of u1 and u2. That's because uh, integrals are linear operations. So that's nice. Now what happens if you ha suppose you have a Fourier transform of u of x, what happens if you try to compute the Fourier transform of u of x minus a? Well, let's use the definition to see what happens. So Here's the definition, e to the power minus i omega x, u of x minus a. Now, we want the u of x there, because we know something about the Fourier transform of u, so we substitute x prime equals x minus a, so dx prime equals dx, and the boundaries remain from minus infinity to infinity, but then we get an x prime plus a over there. Uh, so we have an additional factor, e to the power minus i a omega, but this factor does not depend on x. So it's a constant with respect to the integration. So you can take it in front of the integral. So what you have over here is a Fourier transform of u, and you just get an additional factor e to the power minus i a omega. So that's the formula for the Fourier transform of u of x minus a. Now you can do a similar trick if you have the Fourier transform of u of b times x. So what do you do then? Similarly, you use the definition, use a similar x prime. Now, dx prime equals b times dx, so you get a 1 over b. And then you put the x prime over b, you put a 1 over b in the omega. So what you see is that you have the Fourier transform of uh, u, but only with omega replaced by omega over b. So what you get is a 1 over b, and then you have of omega over b instead of omega. So. Uh, then the fourth rule, what happens if you know the Fourier transform of u, 
But now you have another function, e to the power minus omega naught x times u. Then you also can easily express the Fourier transform of this new function in terms of the old one. Use the definition, so what you get is an additional factor over here. Then you see that you can uh, put those together in an e to the power minus i omega plus omega naught times x. And then you see of exactly again the Fourier transform of u, but now omega is replaced by omega plus omega naught. So you get the u hat of omega plus omega naught. So that's a for formula for that. And then a very nice one, what happens if you differentiate? So if you compute the Fourier transform of u prime, well, use the definition again. Uh, but now we can use integration by parts. We have e to the power minus om i omega x times u prime. So what do we do? We integrate u prime and leave the e to the power minus i omega x between the boundaries. And we get a minus. You leave the u and you compute the derivative of e to the power minus i omega x, which is a minus i omega. So there we are. And then you know, well, this integral over here has to be uh, bounded, so u has to decay if you go to zero. So that means that those boundary terms vanish. And you can take out the uh, minus minus i omega to get a plus i omega. So what you have left is a i omega times a Fourier transform of u. So that's really nice. The Fourier transform of u prime becomes i omega times the Fourier transform of u. So you, this technique is often used in differential equations because that turns differential equations for u of x into algebraic equations for u hat of omega. And algebraic equations are much easier to solve than differential equations.